Hello everyone, this is Dr. Prashant and welcome back to my public health series. So in this video, I'll be briefly talking about the last 10 questions from August 2024 exam. So the main purpose of making this video is that we all know that around 10 questions are asked in UGC, which are numericals. And the question numbers usually are from 141 to 150. So that means the last 10 questions in paper 2. So 10 questions and 20 marks. So three main advantages. Uh, one is these questions are comparatively easy to solve. Second, the probability of getting these questions correct is almost 100%. So that means uh, when you solve these questions carefully, there is no confusion between the options. And the last main advantage is that you don't need to solve these numericals. Okay, That means you don't need to do the full calculation. So you just need to know the formula, numerator and denominator, the multiplier and the concept. Okay, So now let's start with the comprehension. Uh, in this question, they are asking about the screening test. So I already made a special video on screening. Uh, if you didn't watch it, Please go and watch it. I'll post the link in the description. So whenever you see the screening test in exam, uh, don't directly solve the question. Okay. First look at the table, uh, whether it is given in the correct format or not. So what is the correct format? So when they're talking about any screening test, the screening test should be on the left side. Okay. That is test T is given on the left side. That means the format is given in the standard format. So now you can give the codings A, B, C, D and you can apply the formulas. So first they are asking about the negative predictive value. So any predictive value, negative or positive, we need to look horizontally, right? So the formula for NPV is 8550 divided by 8550 plus 100. So that should be 8550 divided by 8650. I think that it should be option 3. So now coming to the next question, they are asking about the sensitivity. So you all know the formula of sensitivity, right? So in this case, it should be 900 divided by 900 plus 100. So that is 900 divided by 1000 multiplied by 100. So it should be option 1. So now coming to the next question, which is slightly twisted, but it's not that hard. So first I will tell you the normal relationship between prevalence and the predictive values. So if the prevalence increases, the positive predictive value that is PPV will increase, but the NPV will decrease. So this is the normal relationship. Okay. So you can answer this question if you know whether the prevalence has increased or decreased, right? So for that, you need to first calculate the prevalence of the screening test. So prevalence is nothing but in the numerator, it is the total number of disease. Okay. Total number of individuals with disease. So in the numerator, it has to be 1000, right? Divided by total screening population that is 10,000. So 1000 by 10,000. And if you multiply it with 100, you will get the prevalence in percentage. It is 10%. So the original prevalence is 10%. So now they are telling the prevalence of disease is being 25%. That means the prevalence has increased. So when the prevalence increase, the PPV will increase, but the NPV will decrease. So the option should be option three. Now the same thing, uh, they are asking you to calculate the prevalence. As I already said, prevalence, the numerator should be the total individuals with disease that is 1000 divided by total population that is 10,000. So 1000 divided by 10,000 multiplied by 100, option three. So now coming to the next question, they are asking you to calculate the specificity. It is very easy. 8550 divided by 8550 plus 450. So that is 9000. So 8550 divided by 9000 multiplied by 100. So it is option 3. So now coming to the next question. These are related to birth rates and death rates. So first they are asking you to calculate the crude birth rate. It is nothing but the number of live births in the numerator divided by total population that is the mid-year population. So it was given directly in the question there are 1500 live births right. So in the numerator it has to be 1500 and in the denominator the total mid-year population is 50,000. So 1500 divided by 50,000 multiplied by 1000. Option 4. So in the next question they are asking you to calculate the infant mortality rate. So infant mortality rate is nothing but the number of deaths within one year, infant deaths within one year divided by total number of live births. So you can check what are the total number of deaths within one year. So it was clearly mentioned a total of 75 deaths were recorded in the age group of zero to one year. So within one year, the total number of infant deaths are 75. So the numerator should be 75 divided by in the denominator, it has to be total live births. So it is 1500. So 75 divided by 1500 multiplied by 1000. So it is option one. So now coming to the next question, they are asking you to calculate the post neonatal mortality. So the formula is in the numerator, we need to see the deaths from 29th day to one year of age group. So in the question, it was directly given 75 deaths were recorded from zero to one year, right? 
and also 40 deaths within 0 to 28 days. So to get deaths from 29th day to 1 year, you just need to subtract 40 from 75. So it will be 35. I think there is only one option where the numerator is 35 and the denominator should be the number of live births that is 1500 multiplied by 1000. So it's option 2. So now coming to the next question where they are asking you to calculate the perinatal mortality rate. So the formula is in the numerator we take the deaths within one week of age group along with the stillbirths. So that means so what, what are the total number of deaths within 7 days? It is, it is mentioned that 25 deaths of children occurred in the age group of 0 to 7 days. Along with that, so what is the total number of stillbirths? That is 30 stillbirths. So 30 plus 25, that is 55. So 55 should be in the numerator and divided by in the denominator, it has to be total number of live births, that is 1500. So 30 plus 25, uh, 55 divided by 1500. So I think 55 divided by 1500 into 1000. So uh, the main formula or the general formula is that in the denominator, we consider live births along with the stillbirths. Okay? But they have mentioned very clearly in the brackets that as per WHO definition, more appropriate in nations with uh, well-established vital records. So in this case, in the denominator, we directly take the live births only. Okay? We are not going to add the stillbirths. But in general, the formula should be uh, 55 divided by 1500 plus 30, that is 1530. So 55 divided by 1530 multiplied by 1000. But as they have already mentioned, uh, there are no established vital records. So we consider in the denominator only the live births. So 55 divided by 1500. So now coming to the last question where they are asking you to calculate the expected number of pregnant women. So for this, uh, there is a direct calculation. So to calculate the expected number of pregnant women, you need to add live births that is 1500 plus 10% of that 1500. So this 10% is nothing but the pregnancy wastage. So it can be stillbirths or abortions or any pregnancy failure. Okay. So 1500 plus 10% of 1500. So the option should be actually 10% uh, of 1500. Okay. It's not just 10%. 1500 plus 10% 10 of that 1500. So I think it should be option 4. So I hope now it's very clear and you can easily score 10 out of 10 in this section. That means 20 marks are in your hands uh, from paper 2. Uh, read the question properly. Uh, try to recollect the concept. Understand the numerator, denominator and the multiplier and just apply the concept to the question. So one main tip is that uh, don't get confused. First thing, uh, you know, go through all the formulas from my SMCH notes. I have given very clearly, uh, you know, in a proper sequence also so that you don't waste your time. So... If there are any other queries, uh, you can post it in the comment section. Thank you.